Live from San Francisco, celebrating 10 years of high-tech coverage, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2019. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Hey, welcome back everyone. It's theCUBE's live coverage here in San Francisco at VMworld 2019. We are in the hall of Moscone North. A lot of stuff going on here. I'm John Furrier, Dave Vellante. Dave, our 10 years covering VMworld has been quite a, quite a ride. Uh, seeing from 2010 to 20 today, a lot's changed but still DR, backup and recovery, still is always a big thing. Our next two guests, this is already CTO and co-founder of Datrium and Igor Zika, director of IT Ascensiva. Thanks for coming on, you're an early customer. Since 1.0, you're on the journey with Datrium. Congratulations, it's been a wild ride, good ride, tell us. Thank you, it's been a journey. It's, it's been a good relationship. We've been using Datrium for three years. Started with 1.0, we're now on 5.3, I believe. Uh, it's been really good, it's been, um, Innovative, it's been challenging uh, from us working in the space where we have to think about what next step is and working towards the um, you know, data transformation internally in order to get to a cloud, but uh, we're almost there, so we are pretty excited about the yeah. opportunity as well. And they, they built a great product, they got some new news. So I'll talk about the new news you got going on here. Um, you got your core product, now you got some new yeah. stuff. Share the news. We kind of finished the journey on where we started off. The idea was to make recovery be better for everybody else. As you know, DR is really mostly a disaster for everybody. So what we have done is that we are able to offer cloud disaster recovery as a service. Idea is that you can have backups in the cloud in Amazon, and when you push a button, you can fail over and bring up your VMware servers on demand, so you can run your workloads right away. And then when you push a button, we'll bring it down and bring it bring data back to you on-prem. So we're calling it Cloud DR as a service to, to VMware Cloud on Amazon. And it's, it's specific to Amazon. It's specific it, to VMware Cloud on Amazon. Right, okay. Um, yeah, one of the, one of the f early instantiations of, of leveraging that platform. I think people are, are mis they misunderstand Datrium. I mean, you guys have been around now for a while, but in the early days, it wasn't clear that you guys are really kind of changing the way in which people approach storage. Maybe that's what you know, interested you at the beginning, but but it, both primary and secondary storage, high performance yet low Have cost. The, that's right. Right. So it's kind of like magic sauce that you've. Ultimately, DR finishes the story, because really, if you look at any data center, the reason why DR doesn't work is because you end up with five different products. One is primary, one is backup, one is DR orchestration, and some other things like encryption, van optimization. You buy all these products for you manage your data in one data center, and then you replicate the same five things on your second data center. Now, if that's not Murphy's Law, I don't know what it is. If you, you, if you push the button one day when there's a disaster, everybody's watching the IT person to actually do this. It's, it's very fragile. It's very scary for a lot of people, which is why it doesn't really work. No customer I've ever met, I've said, it's amazing that the DR works for them. They're, nobody's ever well, said that. Well, most customers, almost all customers say they can't test DR because it's too dangerous. They can just test portions of it, they can test failover but not fail back. Can you explain sort of your approach in DR and how this potentially could change it? Yeah, in our, um, in my experience, DR is challenging for a variety of reasons. Uh, major reasons, yes, you can't actually fully test the DR. You have to put a lot of efforts, a lot of thoughts, and develop a really strong game plan in order to execute DR flawlessly. And a lot of times, uh, you have a chance, a sh very short windows to perform these tests. And um, in order to deliver, you have to do a lot of homework, and you have to do a really good design of your infrastructure and extensive design in order to have a successful outcome. Um, so in my experience, I mean, what, what we're hoping, again, I mean, we are um, journeying towards the um, Daytrim DR solution, is to actually have a solution that's going to be baked in, that we can press a button and have our vision of DR and you know, meet our objectives, meet our TOs, execute it. So let's hit the escape key a little bit. So Sensiba San Filippo, what, what, what are you guys all about? Uh, we are um, one of the largest California north-based um, accounting firm. Um, we deal with accounting and finance and compliance and uh, assurance services. Um, so our focus is to provide clients with um, you know, peace of mind, knowing that their financial data is, uh, um, you know, they're basically accurate. <laughs> accurate. Yeah. That is correct. All right, so paint a picture of your technology infrastructure. So you're obviously, I'm presuming, inferring VMware. 
customer, is that? We are true? VMware customer. Okay, so we but, are but also a day trip customer. Give uh, us an idea of what, what sure. it looks like. And we are uh, basically operating out of a single location. Mm -hmm. We are multi, um, multi office, you know, uh, company, but we operate our single location. We are VMware based. We also uh, VDI based. So everybody works from a digital workspace. Um, our strong focus has been to provide a robust and high performance digital workspace for our employees so they can have a peace of mind and work anytime they want. Was that the first use case for Datrium, was VDI or? Datrium was our foundation to build a robust VDI platform. Okay, so give us the before and after. What, what prompted you to go to with Datrium? Um, um, what was it like before? What was the problem you were trying to solve? And the challenge of the VDI is we have to provide a very robust platform so people feel they work on their local machines. So highly responsive systems, like highly responsive storage systems, the foundations, right, besides having a very you know, high optimized bandwidth, we need to make sure that our bottlenecks are not focused on the storage. So our challenges were provisioning um, VDI machines within a, within a time frame that we actually, with the, with the KPIs that we designed. So um, our challenge was deploying all the master images, deploying um, you know, provisional services, and it's taken a very long period of time, which basically was putting us towards inability for IT guys to do their job. Um, so we were deploying virtual machine master images that took an hour and a half to deploy. Every time we have a change, every time we make a change in our environment, it took a tremendous amount of time in order to apply those changes. Um, so Datrium changed that. That was an infrastructure issue? I mean, a storage infrastructure That was a storage issue? infrastructure Free, issue. How, how did Datrium change that? And maybe, Cezal, you could follow up with the tech behind it. Uh, the, go ahead. Well, <clears throat> if you look at, most people, end users, care about latency. IOPS is one thing, but latency is what matters yeah, to the end users. Indeed. So having our architecture, having the local flash and the software running at the local host for you, that's what really provides the end user experience, which is kind of what we hear from a lot of our customers. The end users tell the IT folks that, hey, something has changed for me. That was our fundamental design architecture we chose from. So that was primary storage. And how do you make that high performance, low latency workloads for, every, for everybody? And that's what we have done. So the technology is basically local flash, software and host, and that's what it gives you the low latency. And so your experience was you went from, what did you say, an hour and a half? To, to, to 15 to minutes. So that was pretty dramatic moment of truth when we deployed Datrium and we started the imaging process and it was finished and to be honest, I thought that is broken, but <laughs> it, it actually was that fast. So gave us a tremendous amount of, I mean ability to deploy and manage and do the work during the work day instead of working after hours. It, and what were you doing for data protection before Datrium? Uh, we use a variety of different solutions, backups, disk to tape and variety of services that actually backed up our and data. And you still do, or? No, we've given that so all you up. You swept the floor of all the legacy stuff, you yeah. got rid of that. Did you have to change your processes, or what was that like? Was that um, painful, was it? We have, to, we have to get rid of a lot of processes that were focused on backup, focused on the time that it took to manage backup. With Datrium, uh, Datrium didn't have the backup from the day one. This is something that they've designed, I think, a second year, and that was very different to see uh, the company that deals with storage creating such an innovative vision for developing all the I mean, developing a roadmap that was actually coming true with every iteration of the software deployment. Um, so the second tier that we provisioned was the snapshots. And the snapshots that were incredibly fast, that didn't take a lot of space, that was, you know, gave us ability to restore almost instantly, um, gave us a huge amount of, um, you know, focus on not focusing on the, on the storage anymore. But when you and Brian and Hugo got together and said, okay, we're going to do this, you, you, you must have been thinking about backup, obviously, right? The it's mostly not so much backup, but about data, data how to protection. make data yeah. recovery faster for people. Mm -hmm. You know, that's quite, not backup, I've been there in the business for a long time. Backup, what do you do backup is very taxing. It's about recovery, and we made recovery fast. So right. the DR finishes the story of recovery to be in the cloud. And essentially eliminate the, the need for a, a separate sort of backup mindset, right? That's, yeah. That was the vision. You can't right? recover from a backup device, as you know. Right, 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 right. So where do you go from here? That's a good question. <laughs> um, we're hoping to go into a fully orchestrated DR solution. Um, so we don't have to think about it. We don't have to, I mean, my thing is like, I don't, I don't want to worry about DR. I want to make sure it's there. I want to be able to prove to business owners and our clients that we have a viable, orchestrated, automated DR solution. So you, you, you gave us some metrics in terms of hour and a half to 15 minutes for deployment, but what about like the, the staff? Um, 
you know, not talking about getting rid of staff, but redeploying staff, or maybe you got rid of staff, I don't know, but what are the people that were spending all that time, you know, the hour and a half before, what are they doing now? Have you sort of reallocated them to some you know, other higher value initiatives? And maybe you could add some color there. Um, using VMware and integrated solutions allows us to have a pretty small profile in the IT group. Um, we're actually operating with the three people, believe it or not, supporting over 250 users um, and systems. So um, we can focus, I mean our main focus instead of troubleshooting uh, technology systems and problems with the storage and problems with you know, networking, we are focused on um, looking for the next best thing, providing high level of customer support, focusing on performance, looking for innovations and you know, so it, it, it's definitely better use than troubleshooting, for sure. And looking yeah, and you for you got an next. innovative solution. What's it like working with an entrepreneurial hot startup? Very cool, very fresh, uh, very good feeling of knowing that you can call in and you have, a, you have an almost in-house IT relationship with the vendor um, is extremely valuable to us. And bringing an innovative approach that makes it go fast, I mean, and making it easier. I mean, talk yeah. about the industry. You go back, I mean, the industry's changed so much. We've been doing the Cube for 10 years. I mean, so much has changed in IT, but it, in product sides, that's where the sprawl happens. I Your think point. so. If you look at the, in the iPhone changed everything, right? So, you know, if you look at iPhone, iCloud, that's what we wanted with our DR service as well. I think the world has changed. You expect those same um, experiences in your, in, your, in your off IT and on IT. The people that want the similar experiences is kind of what we want to do. This is cloud 2.0, this is enterprise cloud. The innovation is a clean sheet of paper, you built it from yep. the ground up. Solves a lot of problems, <laughs> sweep the floor with the other guys. <laughs> As an observer of the, of the storage business, right, you, you kind of look at it, there's two companies now that, that are over a billion dollars in revenue that are independent storage companies. And I was always surprised. The year I met Brian, we had him on theCUBE several yeah. years ago, and you know, he was kind of, you know, coy about what actually you guys are doing, because it was secret. Yep. Um, <laughs> and, and so, and at the time we were thinking, wow, it's just, um, storage's amazing. It's, it's, the, the industry's consolidating, but money keeps flowing into storage because it's still a hard problem to solve. So, what are your thoughts about that, about the industry, its structure, as an independent, you know, pure play storage company? What do you want to do with this, this company? You want to grow it? So we're not a pure price storage company in the sense that we focus on data management as well. So it's not just a pure price storage only. So that's just a dumb storage, you're not going to go anywhere. What you need to do is move a level up and provide customer level, you know, higher level functionality so that they can make their lives easier. Dumb storage doesn't sell anymore. Just lun sand anymore. So that says essentially that, and I would agree with you by the way, that says that essentially that old thinking about the storage model is dead. Yeah. Right, that's why the industry's consolidating. Data, you mentioned data management. Certainly you're seeing a lot of the, 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 the next generation data protection companies use that term, because that term means a lot of things to a lot of different people. What does it mean to you guys? Okay, I'll tell you what it means to us. So if I meet any CIO, they say cloud first strategy. What they mean is that they want to be able to run their workloads anywhere they want to, push a button, move, move from place to place. That's all they care about. So what we, what we are building is a platform, a kind of multi-cloud data plane where we can run in any cloud you want to, you get the same server data services, you push a button, it'll take you to any place you want to. That's what we're really aiming for, and it's just, we believe VMware is there everywhere, and Kubernetes is the other one. So if you put VMware and Kubernetes on top, and Daytrim on the bottom, you can move to any cloud you want to, and you cannot tell the difference. And, and you guys uh, are software, Software, right? yes. You, it's, a, it's a subscription model. And it's also correct? a SaaS model in the cloud. It's no, no deployment of software, it's all like new model of doing SaaS. Right, which is... Yeah. So new architecture, yeah. cloud 2.0. Yeah, totally. cloud 2.0 is my point, it's cloud, cloud 2.0, right. People want yeah. that kind of stuff. People don't want to install, I mean, if you're going to go to the cloud and doing the same things you were doing before, that's not how people want to operate anymore. People yeah. don't have time and patience. Let There's it be still, a, a lot of people are handcuffed to their old stuff and they yeah. want to just get the shackles free. We are liberating people you from are liberating. complexity. Yeah, he's there, case study. Well, yeah. you were nimble enough, you had a good team. You could do it, it's harder yeah. for the bigger guys. It was, it was hard doing it without them, you know, Cezala and the team presenting a vision All right. for the product. This is exactly the kind of stories we'd love to talk about. Thanks for coming on, sharing the insight. Thank you very much. Cloud 2.0, this is a great example of innovation. VMware, Kubernetes, Datrium under the covers. All good, it's a cube. We'll be right back after this short break. Thank you.